Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about some nasty storms that include all three modes of severe weather, as well as an early look going into June. So if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button and the notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Uh, this is the overall satellite picture for this morning, May the 27th. And man, we had a very active day uh, yesterday. We'll go over some of the preliminary storm reports, but that's going to be reloading today. Uh, you can actually see that system diving down. It was in the central plains. That's going to be setting up over Oklahoma, getting into parts of Texas. Those storms pushed off from the northeast. That is now off the coast. And you can definitely see an active uh, eastern Pacific down here. That's the energy source it's tapping into as these troughs dig down from the Pacific Northwest. It's got an ample amount of moisture and you can almost see the feed that's going to be feeding into this system. And if you look well to the north, you can actually see a little bit of swirl happening right here into parts of North Dakota. That's going to be our second system that's going to be diving down to the south after this first system uh, moves through. So here are your preliminary storm reports. Uh, like I mentioned, it was a very active day. A lot of this didn't even get going until about four o'clock uh, yesterday afternoon. But man, look at all the wind reports that took place over the northeast. And we got over 28 tornado reports so far reported over much of Texas, over the Central Plains, into Kansas and Nebraska. It was a very active day. Overall, about 559 uh, severe weather reports so far reported. And these are just preliminary. So they'll be adding to these totals with that very active day. And unfortunately, we have another pretty active day uh, setting up for today. So let me kind of walk you through. These same storms are you know, that went over the Central Plains. That's the, that's the setup for this afternoon. This is 19Z. This is about 2 o'clock uh, this afternoon. We could be looking at a new round of storm development happening in the parts of Oklahoma. Uh, up to the north, we'll have some storms in northern uh, Missouri, you know, going into uh, Illinois and, uh, you know, uh, Minnesota, as well as Wisconsin. But as these things continue to dive off and as they tap into those warmer temperatures, you know, into the daytime heating hours, by the time we go into, you know, zero, uh, zero four Z, that's about eight, nine o'clock tonight on Thursday, that'll be over much of Oklahoma City. That'll be diving down, getting into parts of, uh, you know, North Texas. That'll be swinging across into uh, Arkansas. That'll be swinging across in a, into a linear line. So these could be some damaging winds that are, that are going to be happening with some large hail in and around as this band continues to drop further southeast. So we'll have storms in uh, parts of uh, Illinois as well as uh, Indiana. So let me highlight the threats as we go into late afternoon into the uh, overnight hours. The Storm Prediction Center, this is the latest update as of 8 a.m. So they continue to... Uh, enlarge the enhance and they continue to shift a little bit the slight risk further southward as we get closer into the dallas fort worth area so in this zone within the orange shaded zone that is your enhanced risk that is your most significant threat of severe weather into oklahoma city getting into tulsa getting into norman wichita falls into lawton as these continue to shift further south, they will weaken in nature as we have a pretty strong cap over North Texas. And again, but as these storms, because they're going to be so strong, that's going to help weaken the cap and, you know, and still allow these, a lot of these storms to survive, you know, the further north you live. But they actually, it has included, uh, you know, parts of the Dallas-Fort Worth area into that slight risk for severe weather now into Dallas, into Fort Worth, into Kansas City, going into Arlington, as well as St. Louis, Missouri. So you're going to be under the gun later on this afternoon into the early evening hours as these storms continue to push across. So let me highlight the, the threats. I mean, here's your hail threat. So that's going to be a significant threat again with that larger hailstones. I mean, that hatched risk, again, that's a huge area. And a lot of this is 30%, basically implying you have a 30% chance within this little dotted hatched risk zone that you could see a hailstone that could fall anywhere from a two inch in diameter in nature or greater. 
Uh, so that is some dangerous stuff. That is going to do a lot of damage to your vehicles. That would be setting up over Oklahoma City into Tulsa into Lubbock, going into Norman into you know parts of like Wichita Falls area. They'll subside a little bit and go into more of those half dollar quarter size type hail into more or less can you know Kansas City Missouri, you know going into Lubbock and parts of Amarillo Overland Park Kansas area and then again subside even further as they swing into the Dallas Worth area as they go into the overnight. So, uh, but yeah, your tornado threat is gonna be a little bit elevated as well. Not as elevated as yesterday, but still a pretty significant threat for a good swath. You could see a possible tornado uh, later on this afternoon in and around that same area in Oklahoma City, to Tulsa, to St. Louis, to Lubbock, to Springfield, Missouri, could be under the gun, and then maybe possibly an isolated threat along this, along this leading edge of this uh, band that's gonna be moving across Southeast later on tonight. So basically, you know, anywhere from Fort Stockton, you know, all the way swinging up to parts of uh, Illinois, you still could be susceptible to see possibly an isolated threat for a tornado later on this afternoon. As that continues to dive Southeast, this, as you wake up on Friday morning, this would be May the 28th now up here at the top, that's going to be weakening as it continues to push across into a parts of Louisiana, uh, parts of the Ohio Valley, still going to be some storms into Illinois, into Indiana, and parts of the Ohio Valley swinging across into upstate New York, possibly into parts of uh, northern Pennsylvania. But this will be setting out an, what they call an outflow boundary over parts of the Red River, along with the cold front that's going to be swinging down south. That's going to be a renewed chance for severe weather as we go into the day on uh, Friday. So you can definitely see on the latest HRRR model, by the time we get into the afternoon hours on the 22Z, that's about 3, 4 o'clock time frame into the, into the afternoon. Yes, we could be seeing a renewed chance along that outflow boundary into the Dallas-Worth area, into parts of Oklahoma, uh, going into uh, parts of East Texas, into Arkansas, into Louisiana, as, as along that warm sector, we'll have more severe weather firing up, and these will have a, a swing across into parts of the Northeast as well. So yes, the Storm Prediction Center has highlighted that threat for marginal risk. So these are not gonna be nearly as severe as they were the previous day, but still you could see a marginal risk for you know some of these elevated storms that could drop some, you know, say, you know, larger hailstones, maybe a quarter size of that nature. But again, the, the main threat is gonna be your flooding threat as these are gonna be shifting down uh, to the Southeast uh, going into the afternoon hours. So as we go into Saturday, we tend to kind of calm down a little bit. We're still gonna have possibly one more lift because you have that outflow boundary continuing to shift a little bit further south into North Texas. That could be setting the stage for a possibly a renewed chance into the overnight hours with these continuing disturbances that will be moving across. So we could be looking at another round of storms that are gonna be moving through the overnight hours on Friday night going into Saturday morning. And these will probably set up a little bit further south, depending on the outflow boundary of the two previous storms. But yeah, these could be looking at pushing a little bit further south into more or less into, into uh, northern Texas, into central Texas, as this continues to push across into Louisiana. And again, kind of fade as they go into, uh, into the northeast with just some strong storms, probably not as severe in nature. But as we go into Sunday, definitely things tend to calm down even somewhat. I mean, this is, a, this is your Memorial Day weekend, so we want it to be as nice as possible, right? So I know a lot of you guys have outdoor plans and you want to cook out, spend time with the family. I get it. You know, I got plans too. So I don't want, I don't want any bad weather around. <laughs> so I want some nice weather. And I do feel, uh, you know, most, for the most, for the most part of the country, Sunday is going to be probably one of your better days out there. So get out and, and enjoy. But unfortunately, as we go into the Memorial Day weekend, this active pattern just kind of reloads. So I kind of zoomed out and showed you the setup as we go into uh, Memorial Day, this would be, uh, you know, Monday now, May 31st. Yes, we have a ridge that's going to be building in into the Pacific Northwest. So I'm looking at some more drier conditions filtering back into the Pacific Northwest with some much warmer anomalies. 
with this trough that's going to be setting up over that with that active monsoon trough that's setting up over the eastern pacific like i showed you that's going to bring some more another disturbance that's going to be moving across into on uh, memorial day that's going to be setting up over much of next week with a, a renewed chance of an active pattern with a much cooler temperatures to the south and but yet daily rain chances for much of the central u.s coming back into the picture um, as we look at the latest uh, mjo and what those phases look like you can actually see here i kind of highlighted several things so let me slow down a little bit so here's here's the uh, may 26 through june the 9th okay so you can see where we are now we're in phase six Phase six was a predominantly warmer phase that you just experienced in a lot of the Northeast, a lot of the Ohio Valley that you're continuing to experience into the Southeast. But notice the MJO, that's gonna be diving down more or less into phase seven. That transition into a little bit colder phase, you can see what it looks like in May timeframe, it's cooler but not nearly as cool as we go into June because we have a lot more blue on the map than we do in, in uh, June as we do in May. So as this transitions into phase seven going into the month of June with that active trough that's gonna be coming coming across and from the equatorial Pacific that's gonna be moving over the central plains again, that's gonna bring back cooler temperatures for much of the southern parts of the US and getting into uh, parts of the central plains here as we go into uh, the first week of June. So if you take a look at the latest uh, JMA, JMA model, I love this model, but unfortunately it only comes out once a week. And this is Thursday. So a lot of a lot of Thursdays, I look at this and here's the updated model. Here's, let me highlight this. This is day three through nine. So that would more or less put it in that first week of June, right? So we have that active MJO coming across. We have that trough, like I showed you setting up with the blue line. That is your upward rising motion air. So that is very inclement weather. That's that that it would that would be tapping into the equatorial Pacific with this upward rising motion air coming back into the central plains. And look at that. I mean, that'll set the stage for a renewed chance and probably flooding rains going back in the picture into much of the central plains into Texas, unfortunately, for for the first week in June. And even we expand the view as that active MJO will be coming across uh, from east to west. Look at all the blue that's going to be setting up even on day 10 to day 16. This would be going into the second week of June. That sets the stage for, again, more inclement weather, more active weather, more rainy weather, and probably cooler weather as we have a lot of upward rising motion air that's going to be over much of the central part of the U.S. So let me break this down. Here's the latest uh, GFS model on the 10-day anomaly. I broke it down over day 5 to 10, which highlights that trough and that setup from June 1st to June the 6th. There, it almost matches it verbatim with that ridge that's going to be building into much of the west with much uh, drier conditions, unfortunately, coming back in the picture. I'm sorry, I wish I had better news for you guys out west. And then where the ridge is, where you where it's dry, you fry out here in the west. But that trough will be setting up again, coming in. That'll bring much cooler conditions back into Texas, back into Central Plains, back into parts of the, the, the southeast, where you try to warm up in parts of the of the northeast and far tier interior portions of the northeast, but I'm not so certain that I'm I'm buying this. I'm I'm favoring what you know the MJO with these possibly backdoor fronts that's going to be coming in into uh, the uh, into the northeast. But if you if you look at the latest uh, climate prediction model of uh, their updated model from June 1st to June 5th. It almost matches verbatim the GF GFS and more or less the JMA model that's coming in into much warmer conditions out west. There's your trough underneath with much cooler conditions. It doesn't have the backdoor front in the Pacific Northwest. It more or less matches the GFS model. So I'll be favoring the uh, MJO phase seven on this with a little bit cooler conditions than what this is probably trying to display uh, right here. But the moral of the story is, we're gonna be dealing with more 
rain and possibly flooding rains in a lot of the same areas that have gotten a lot of rain because here's your next 10 days guys so man where that ridge is out west it's pretty predominant i mean just the continuing dryness out here in much of the pacific northwest as these systems come across with that active eastern pacific as that active trough that'll have ample amount of moisture to tap into into much of texas much of oklahoma into central plains going into much of the parts of the ohio valley getting into uh, the northeast so more or less that'll be a very active time with a lot of upward right upward rising motion air going into into the first part of a june as like i showed you on the on the uh, jma model so hey i appreciate you guys uh, watching i uh, do like this video definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where i protect you before and at the storm.